Let's start off by talking about what many would consider to be a confusing topic in implied volatility, but it's not that confusing if we start off with just a basic definition. So we can define implied volatility as the market's expectation of how much an asset's price will fluctuate in the future based on option prices. So it reflects perceived risk with the higher values indicating greater expected price swings. And in general, we could say that a higher implied volatility would imply higher option prices. So the long position on a call or put option would tend to prefer volatility to increase or go up, whereas the short position on a call or put option would prefer for it to go down. So when we're talking about implied volatility, oftentimes this is derived from the Black-Scholes option pricing model, which is the most popular option pricing model. In the Black-Scholes model, there's basically five assumed inputs. The first is the stock price denoted as S, which is the current asset price. So if we were looking at a specific stock like Nvidia, as an example, it would just be the current price of Nvidia's stock. So we will take the stock price S and we will pass it in as an input to the Black-Scholes model. Now the next input is the strike price, which we'll denote as K, which is the options exercise price. So we will pass in that exercise price as an input into the Black-Scholes model as well. Then we have the time to expiration or T. So time left until expiration. Typically, this will be measured in years. So if the option expired in one year, we would say T is just one. So we'll pass T in as an input as well. And then we'll get the risk-free rate denoted as R. This is the interest rate typically on treasuries. And so typically we can just use the risk-free rate of whatever treasury security matches the time to maturity. So if it was a one year time to expiration, we could get a one year treasuries risk-free rate. So we'll pass R in as an input as well. And then finally, we have the volatility, or we can think of it as the implied volatility. This is the assets price fluctuation. So this will be passed in as an input as well into the Black-Scholes model. Then once we have all these, what we're trying to find is the options price or premium, the amount you would have to pay to get the option. But the thing is, we can go and look at all these things easily. We can go look at what is the current stock price. We can look at the exercise price on the option. We can see how long it is till this option matures. And we can go look at the rate on a treasury. The thing that we cannot easily look at is the implied volatility. So basically, we can also go out into the market and we can see this. We can actually go out and look and see what is this option priced at at any given time. Of these six things we've talked about on this screen, the only one we really can't go out and just look up is this implied volatility or the volatility. So what we would say is that although it sort of looks like circular logic, this options price here is actually driving what we assume is this volatility or the implied volatility. Now let's hop over into Excel to work on a real calculation of the implied volatility of a real world option that exists right now as I'm recording this video. So don't get too intimidated by the math. You don't need to know all this. Just know that there's four equations here. One is to calculate a calls value. I have created that. This is the Black-Scholes option pricing model re-implemented into Excel. The next one is the price of a put. I've calculated that. And then the inputs into the call and put calculations, which are called D1 and D2, don't worry too much about the math. I've calculated those as well. So what we can do is figure out what might be the implied volatility on an NVIDIA option. So in this example, I have taken the real option chain right now for an NVIDIA call option. Uh, that is basically 375 days into the future for expiration. So we can go through and put in all the five inputs to the Black-Scholes model to try to come up with what is implied volatility. So first we need the underlying price of S. We can see that right here. NVIDIA's current underlying price is 149.43. Then we need to get a strike price. 
So we could use any of these strike prices. I've got strike prices of 142, 144, 145, etc. I chose the one that was closest to the underlying stock price of 150. So we'll use this row right here. Now we can look at the time to expiration T. So we have 375 days to expiration. So in order to calculate what is T, I just took 375 days to expiration divided by 365 days in a year, which gives us 1.027 years of time to expiration. Now we can come up with the risk-free rate of R. So I have 4.171%, how did I get that? All I did was just look up the one-year treasury rate, and I see that right now it is 4.171%. So why did I use the one-year treasury rate? Well, I use that because this call option really has one year to expire into the future. Now, what would I put for volatility? Well, this might be the thing that I really don't know. So I just plugged in 30% because I was not sure. So this is where we can try to calculate the implied volatility. So we can get, look over at this option chain for NVIDIA and see that an NVIDIA call option with a strike of $150 has a bid price. So the price of the option for the bid is $32.75. So right now I see after I implemented Black Shoals that I have a value of $20.72. Now that is not correct. I want to get this $32.75. So I need to figure out what would be the volatility that would get me to that amount. So what I can do in Excel, and you might not have this in your Excel, if you don't see under the data tab, this analyze on the right side, you could right click, hit customize ribbon, and then go to add-ins, and then make sure it's on Excel add-ins go, and then make sure that you have the solver add-in checked and hit okay. So now we'll pull up that solver right here. And so with the solver pulled up, what we can do is we can set our objective, which is the price of the call, which is in cell I3 right here, to a value of, and we know we want that value, so we'll check value of, to be 3275. And what do we want to change? We want to do it by changing that implied volatility right here. So that is D18. And now I can hit solve and then OK. And we'll see that the implied volatility that comes up with a price of that 32.75 for the call option is 50.85%. Now I can look at the NVIDIA option chain that I got from Fidelity Active Trader Pro says that for this call option, the implied volatility on the bid, so the IV on the bid, is actually 49.52%. So I'm off by just 1%, which is a pretty immaterial difference. Now, why might I be off by 1%? Well, Fidelity on their back end, I'm not sure how exactly they calculated. They could have used maybe a different day count convention, perhaps 360 instead of 365 days, or they could have used a different risk-free rate, like maybe they used a 10-year treasury rate or something like that. So anyways, although it wasn't perfectly accurate, we did back into our implied volatility. This video is a part of my course, Options Theory to Practice. I'll guide you step-by-step -step through the fundamentals of options, all within a safe and controlled paper trading environment where no real money is at risk. You can learn more via the link in the video description or pinned comment.